Hello and welcome to Dr. Manoj's first part of a quick revision for natural resources part of unit 3 in your environmental science and engineering course. Watch and listen carefully to grasp the major key points and concepts. However, you must refer to one of the recommended textbooks for a more complete study. Let us begin. Your syllabus GE6153 for EVS lists that you learned the following for natural resources. As before in the video on environmental pollution, here too I shall help you remember about the six natural resources using an EC method. Right then, at the outset, natural resources mean those resources such as sunlight, soil, trees and other components which are beneficial to us human beings. These natural resources are of two types based on whether they can be regenerated after use or are abundant. If the answer is yes, they are renewable resources and if the answer is no, they are called non-renewable sources. Some of the most well-known renewable natural resources are sunlight, water and wind, while non-renewable resources generally are symbolized by coal and other fossil fuels. If you look to the picture of a forest scenery to your left, you can see that many of the resources are not present separately in nature, but are in fact integrated in a complicated interconnected manner. This is the main message that you must remember at this point since in the natural environment an impact on any one resource is enough to cascade through all the other natural resources. Here we come to the part where I make it easy for you to remember the names of all the six resources in sequence. Okay, here is a sentence that you must remember. It goes something like this. Finally finished with my environmental lesson. Now, the first letter of every word in that sentence I just took, told you is the first letter for each of these six natural resources. So, we have forest, food, water, mineral, energy and finally land resources. In this video, we shall briefly see the forest resources. I hope you all understand what a forest is by now. If you don't, then head over to my video on Unit 1 where forests are mentioned as one of the land ecosystems. In the present unit, however, you must look at forests from a different perspective. We must look at forests as a very important natural resource from which we derive a variety of commercial and ecological benefits. In the picture, you can see some of the commercial products that can be derived from a single tree in a forest. So. You can only imagine the commercial potential of an entire forest compared to this one tree. Apart from commercial benefits, a forest also provides indirect benefits to us by its regular ecological activities. These include harboring a rich biodiversity with different values, nutrient cycling, absorbing carbon dioxide, preventing soil erosion, among others. Regardless of the ecological services rendered, the forest resources are continuously consumed for human use. Large scale clearing of forested areas for human use is called deforestation. The immediate effects of deforestation are visually evident and the soil previously protected by roots are now exposed to erosion. Habitats of wildlife are immediately destroyed and biodiversity in this area is permanently lost. Unfortunately, the story does not end with deforestation. The environmental impacts have only just begun. The effects of deforestation resulting in fertility loss directly corresponds to a loss in productivity of the land, especially when used for agriculture, leading to what is known as land degradation. The land now becomes unsuitable for plant growth or water retention and eventually becomes a desert, wherein it becomes completely unsuitable as a regular habitat or for any other purpose. This process is then called as desertification. Now, there are many causes for such large-scale deforestation and some of them can be avoided, while others are complicated to avoid, reduce or desist. Whenever we utilize a natural resource at a rate which is faster than the time taken to naturally recover, then we call such a process as over-exploitation. Agriculture is one such major cause. Generally, agriculture is practiced on a cleared forest land since it is very fertile initially. However, the method of clearing the forest is extremely damaging. In the case of slash and burn agriculture, large areas of forest land is burnt to make way for agriculture 
while in the case of shifting cultivation patches of forests are discontinuously cleared to make way for agriculture this easily creates habitat fragmentation another practice of agriculture that is extremely damaging to forests is monoculture common examples include tea and rubber plantations where forests are cleared to grow only one type of plant this clearly destroys the forest ecosystem dams are generally considered or constructed across rivers to store water for an year round irrigation and for the generation of electricity advantages aside dams are environmentally damaging to forests during construction phase and during operation phase the environmental damage to forest resources from dams occur in both upstream and downstream the most interesting effect of dams is their ability to create microclimatic changes and influencing seismic activities another very serious issue is the effect of dams on tribal populations who have made the forest their home these tribal people get displaced and their rehabilitation and resettlement is particularly difficult mining is another important human activity where clearing of forest becomes mandatory in order to reach the mineral resources in this scenario there are generally two types of mining namely surface and underground mining where underground mining is less damaging on the environment however mining projects lead to large scale destruction deforestation and permanent defacing of the landscape this combined with the toxic chemicals used in ore processing further damage the soil and contaminate the groundwater resources the noise generated during mining also drives away wildlife displacement of human settlements especially tribal communities is a routine incident of mining activities on forests the suggested measure for forest resource conservation is to practice mixed cropping reduce mining activities or follow scientific mining activities however the best method is promoting reforestation or afforestation activities by encouraging the planting of tree saplings in the words of our most respected dr apj abdul kalam sir the best time for planting trees was 20 years ago the next best time is now so that sums up the lecture where you were introduced to the basic concepts of natural resources and forest resources in particular thank you and bye bye